Good evening. Dad's got hay on the ground. He cut the bottom field and the orchard grass field. He's probably got mm, 16 acres on the ground or so. Be the first time we get to try the round baler out since we did the work to it. So hopefully everything goes well there. And he's planning on square baling some. While the disc is still hooked up, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that field one more time before I unhook it to cut. I'll probably cut tomorrow, and hopefully that'll be enough time to get my hay dry. I'm I'll probably, probably, probably be doing that tomorrow after I get home from work. So, I'll let this now, and I'll probably go ahead and unhook the disc and get at least ready. I may go ahead and hook the disc line up too, so it'll be ready tomorrow when I get ready to start cutting. And you know me, who knows? I might start cutting tonight. We'll see. Got a disc bind, so I don't have to worry about it being a little bit damp. It's nice. Let's go disc, guys. about a half inch of rain since I disked this the last time. So if you look here, you'll see this is slightly crusted over. See, I can break it up and it breaks right up. That's what I wanted. If you get a little bit of rain on it after you work it, I'm not talking like a gully washer or a toad strangler or anything like that. Something to melt those claws down a little bit and then you hit it with the disc and it breaks it apart, it'll break it off the, the, the root wad a little bit better off these plants. And so you can see the difference here. See where we've worked or where we haven't. You go over here, it's broken up. Uh, you know, there's still some, some residue. Most of this is getting broken up pretty decent. And then you look over here, you can see pull up clods like that. It is August 23rd. We want to be planted by mid-September. So we still have three weeks before we really need to plant. Once again, the rig we're using, we've got a 1010 Kiwani disc, cab controlled, mind you. All that means is, uh, I guess it's hydraulic fold and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, she's nothing to write home about, but this is really the first real disc I ever bought. And I say real, not like a real. Uh, like it's an actual disc and not a garden disc. No offense to anybody that has a garden disc that they're working around with. That's what we use for years. But having something that's got enough weight to it to actually cut uh, is nice. And we're pulling it with a 2135 white. Uh, I do have duels for it. I haven't put the duels on because I make hay with this tractor. And it pulls this disc just fine, really. I mean, I'm not saying I don't have any slippage. Uh, if I hit a wet spot, it'll spin out. I do have some slippage here, but uh, even if I just had better tires, would do a lot better. But I was actually had some new tires picked out. I was getting ready to make the deal. Honestly, I don't want new tires. I like the tires that are worn like this. 
because I don't do a lot of tillage. And for my hay fields, whenever I turn, this does less damage than new tires with full tread wood. So I'm kind of holding out on these as long as they're good and they're not causing me issues. That's what we're going to use. So we're going to finish up here. Uh, this will probably be all the footage I get for tonight because it's starting to get dark. Tomorrow, I'll be cutting some hay. So, take you guys along for that trip. And I'll catch up with you then. Good sunny afternoon, guys. I'm ready to unhook the disc. Get the disc bind hooked up. Alright guys, we're going to try something. We're going to spread this windrow out. I made one pass here. You can see how I've got it, how I normally cut it. And I've covered this multiple times. You can go back and see those videos if you want to know more. But basically, I usually pull it in, gives my ground a chance to dry, then I tet it out. I have a tether. Obviously, this wouldn't work well if you don't have a tether because it's not going to completely dry in a windrow like this. But for my situation, this is perfect actually because one, my tether and my rake reaches it better since this is a 12 foot swath. Two, it dries, lets the ground dry, and whenever I tether it back out, it dries quicker. And there's other reasons as well, but we won't get into that. But we're going to lower this diverter the swath board here whatever you want to call it so it's not going through the chute as much i'm going to lower that thing 10 turns and we'll go there and we'll just kind of see i i don't want to go too much because then it's a pain to get it with the rake and i don't have a kicker on my rake so i like i really like to have that little bit of space between the rows so whenever i rake it the windrow is in between there so all the rake all the hay gets turned over when i rake one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten. We're gonna try it and see what happens. Now the back, we'll see. I may, it may have to change it because it's definitely thicker back there. This here is not very thick, so we'll see. We're actually gonna go up to fifth gear. All right, let's get some makeup. The other reason is when I narrow it up, I don't drive on any of my windrow at all. When it's spread out like this, I have to drive at least one set of tires, sometimes two sets, depending on what kind of turn I'm making and everything. Uh, which, you know, I know there's people out there that think driving on your windrow makes zero difference, or actually helps it dry. Uh, but in my area, in my experience, driving on your windrow is a very uh, detrimental practice on getting your hay dry but we'll see we'll see how it goes here's what i got done on this field so far got my outside rounds and i made two passes two swap two rounds down the back for four swaths there now we're going to go lay off the backfield because I'm going to have Dad, he's going to be coming over here in a little bit to actually cut this hay for me because I have to go out of town for work. So uh, just for a day, but I'd like, I want to get this cut and I got a little bit of a drive to get to where I'm going tonight. Dad's going to come over and finish mowing for me, but I'm going to get everything laid off. He's never actually cut with my this vine before so it'll be a pretty big learning curve going from from a disc mower three point mounted to a center pivot disc vine so 
I just want to get it laid off so it's that much that you don't have to be concerned about getting into lambs and stuff laying around the edge of the field. So I'll take care of all that, get it laid out where he's just got to go back and forth. And the joys of are doing stuff around tree lines. Little stick, little stick, lots of little stuff. Little stuff, little stuff. Oh, that's a little bit bigger. Oh, that's a little bit bigger too. In case you can't see it. I don't think I can do that one-handed. Stuff don't do too good really going through anything. The mower, the rake, or the bale. So let's get this out of the field. Did you get the steering wheel down? Yeah. You're a big boy. You know how to operate this thing, don't you? Roll on. All right, we're heading to the house. Thing sure does sound good, though. I love the sound of that tractor. Perfect amount of engine noise, and you can still hear the turbocharger. It's just beautiful. Well, you guys can't see him because he's running without the lights. Got a contest going. <laughs> I'm headed down the road, as always, getting around later than what I really wanted to. It is what it is. At least we got the hay ready to cut. I shouldn't say ready. I mean, I, I probably cut a really good portion. By the time you make the outside rounds, that's a big chunk of the field there. Uh, so dad's probably got another 15 minutes in that field. Maybe 20 as slow as he's going, which that don't bother me. I'd rather him be careful and cautious then ramming and jam there's the low spots in the backfield and the some of the spots around the edge of the field have some, some just some junk warm season summer fall annual grasses that I consider weeds they're not really weeds they're grass but this is not where it's supposed to be it's weed right those areas, I think we're gonna go ahead and round bail. He was planning on bailing everything tomorrow, but he went ahead and round bailed that bottom clover field today. Got 25 round bales, didn't have any issues with the round baler, didn't catch on fire, so that's a win. But in saying that, I'm planning on actually round bailing part of this in the back, the stuff that has that junk crap that I don't wanna sell to somebody. Uh, we're gonna just round bail that. <clears throat> No sense in taking it, it taking up space in the barn when it's when it's junk stuff. We'll help Dad bail Thursday, and I'll be working on my stuff. Probably do some tedding, and my stuff will probably bail Friday, maybe Saturday. But uh, there won't be a whole lot. It's not real heavy. It's been a little bit dry here, and the heat is what the big thing is. That's it, guys. I will see you in the next video. God bless you. God bless America. Franklin County Forage out.